Hello YouTube! I'm here today to talk to you about my April wrap-up and talk a little bit about what I'm planning to read in May. I actually managed to read 10 books this month, which is I think the most that I've read so far this year in a month, and so let's talk about what I read. So the first thing that I picked up this month was Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. I listened to this book on audiobook and it was it was a really intense experience. This book is about a kid named Letter Peacock who has a plan to take a gun to school, shoot another kid, and then shoot himself. And the whole book is sort of his story about what got him to this point and why he's planning on doing it and sort of his last day. And it's really, really intense. And I think that the audiobook was a really good choice for how to consume it because I feel like having a really, really good young male narrator read this book actually really felt like Leonard was confiding in me while I was listening to this book. And because of that, it was really real and really scary. And I actually would have to turn it off sometimes because I was just so nervous for him. I just really, really thought this book was well done and great. Then I read The Madness Underneath by Maureen Johnson. That is the second book in the Shades of London series. I also listened to this book on audiobook, even though I had read the physical copy of the first one, and I enjoyed the switch. It was a book that I was able to consume really quickly because it's a lot easier for me to read a lot of audiobooks because I drive almost two hours every day to and from work. My only complaint about the audiobook is that the narrator used whispering as a mechanic all the time to show sadness and intensity and whispering is really hard to hear when you're driving because the road is loud especially when you're out on the freeway and so I actually had a hard time hearing the book even when I turned it up all the way but that was kind of my only big complaint. So the second book in the series it's hard for me to rate these because I really enjoyed the entire story and I kind of look at it as one long story but the middle book suffered from middle book syndrome because it sort of resolved what happened in the first book and set up what happened in the third book. I was able to forgive because I, I was able to move right on to the third book, but I feel really bad for the people who read the second book when it first came out and then had to wait for the third book because it didn't really feel very satisfying. It felt short and it felt like it didn't have its own contained arc. I really enjoyed the places that this book went. You know, the first book is really just about the Jack the Ripper situation going on. In the second one, sort of expands the world and you find out a lot more about the shades and you find out a lot more about ghosts in general and you find out about more people who have the sight and I just think that all of those directions were really cool and the characters were just so great. Callum and Boo and Steven especially were just so much more developed and I really really liked them. I like I like the way that this whole series went. So the next thing I read was Saga Volume 2 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I don't know how I waited this long to read this because I read Saga Volume 1 last year and I've had these on my shelf but they were just overlooked. I don't know. I absolutely loved this. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the next book that I read was Saga Volume 3 and I just <laughs> can't say enough good things about this graphic novel and uh, like every plot line of this graphic novel is so developed and you learn Seriously, between these two, you learn so much more about every other character in this world, and I appreciated that, and I cannot wait to run out and buy the fourth volume, and I love it, and if you like graphic novels and all and you haven't read Saga, what are you waiting for? Then I read The Shadow Cabinet by Maureen Johnson. This is the third book in the Shades of London series. I was just so invested in this story, and I'm just heartbroken that this one came out so recently, and we have no idea when the next one's coming out. I guess next year, but that's all we know. I really liked it. Like I said, I felt like this story went in a lot of really interesting ways. I, there were times when I was actually legitimately frightened for the main characters, and I just cannot wait to find out what happens next. It ended on such an interesting cliffhanger. Not not nearly as big of a cliffhanger as the second book, but like I definitely want to know the implications of what these final choices meant, and I just oh, I wish I wish we were closer to getting the next book but or not, and I'm just very happy that I finally caught up and read the series. I think that Maureen Johnson really outdid herself, and these books felt very different from her other books, and I just loved them a lot. Then I read, just sort of ducked in under the wire there, Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson, which was the book club book of the month for March, April for the Restricted Section Book Club, which is my book club. It took me a really long time to get into this book, I'll be honest. I kind of put it off because the first hundred pages or so I found to be so tedious and boring. So this is a book about a girl whose best friend disappears and she has no idea why and leaves her this list of things that she sh needs to do without any explanation. And the main character is someone who is very introverted and relies very much on this other friend to sort of help her live her life. And 
those first hundred pages, I know that there are people like this and I know that this is something that people deal with, but I just, I just found that to be so tedious and so lazy and it didn't resonate with me because I was just so irritated with her that she felt like she couldn't even think on her own with Sloane gone. And so it took me a while to get out of that slump and when I finally got to the point in the book where she started making her own friends and really started checking things off her list, that's when this book really picked up for me. I ended up having kind of a bunch of issues with this book, the fact that it felt like she was learning that Sloane maybe wasn't the best friend, but like that never seemed to really go anywhere. And the fact that her argument with Don and Collins just weren't resolved ever. Anyway, there's just a lot about this book that didn't feel resolved to me. And so even though it was a fun experience and I ended up getting really into it and had a good time reading it, it only got about a 3.5 from me because I just felt like I was left wanting more and not in a good way, you know? Then I read Sex Criminals Volume 2. I forgot to mention that I did Dewey's 24-hour readathon, which is why I managed to power through so many of these graphic novels, and also uh, how I read the next book on my list, which I'll get to in a minute. But this is by Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky. I read Sex Criminals Volume 1 last year, around this time actually, I think it's been that long. I thought this book went in a very different direction and was really interesting. I really appreciated how it tackled um, mental illness and relationships in this really real way and this really honest way and I think that for a book that is just full to the brim with dirty jokes like anywhere they can fit a dirty joke they do it in this graphic novel it also was like I said really honest and really real and tackled some really like important topics and I just think that that's such an impressive thing to be able to do both of those so well um, so I really enjoyed volume two and I can't wait to find out more about this story then for Dewey's 24-hour readathon I read Doll Bones by Holly Black. This is just a short little book. I I didn't actually know that I think it's supposed to be middle grade. Um, I just thought it sounded cool and I bought it last time I went to Half Price Books. But this is a book about some kids who love playing this make-believe game where they have these action figures and they make up this big epic story. And there's this uh, creepy doll that's like the queen. They call her the queen and she's made of bone china and they find out a bunch of creepy stuff about her origins and she's sort of speaking to them and they go on this epic quest to sort of lay her to rest and I really wanted to love this book because I usually really like Holly Black but I thought that this book was a little bit confused about what it was trying to accomplish because I started getting like a series of unfortunate events Lemony Snicket vibe. It's these three young kids and they do all these crazy things where you are sort of expected to suspend your disbelief a little bit that they could actually do these things. So I really love that about A Series of Unfortunate Events because you get to the point in the story where this baby, Sunny, is sword fighting with her teeth or climbing out of an elevator shaft with her teeth and you're totally okay with that because that's just the way the story is and the weirder things have happened, that sort of vibe. This book did a couple things like that. These kids steal a sailboat and break into a library but those things were like not crazy enough for that to feel like oh these kids just do crazy things all the time but a little too extreme for these kids to feel like they could get away with the way that they did so I don't know it, it just feels a little confused so I think I maybe would have appreciated it more if I was younger but it was at least a fun read to get another book under my belt for Dewey's 24 hour readathon. And the last book that I finished in April was Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I also listened to the audiobook for this one, which was great. There were a few times where she would mention pictures in your PDF, which I don't think I got. And I, I felt like I missed out on that, but ultimately I think that audiobook is the way to go with this book. It was so funny, and usually I'm not super into memoirs, but Bossy Pants was great. Tina Fey is amazing. There was a lot of things about her that I didn't actually know, which was wonderful and I just was entertained every step of the way. I usually listen to audiobooks uh, sped up a little bit. I'll go 1.25 or 1.5 depending on the story and how the narrator's voice flows at quicker paces, but I actually listen to Bossy Pants at one because listening to Tina Fey and having her voice altered at all just sounded so wrong and the book was so good that I didn't want it to go by faster. So this is the only book that I've listened to recently that I didn't actually speed up, which I thought was worth noting. What I'm reading right now is Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen. I have not read a Sarah Dessen book since I was in like high school and this one just has the most gorgeous cover. 100% I wanted to read this book based on the cover. Um, so I'm in the middle of that right now. I'm not far enough in it to really have formulated an opinion yet, but I think I'm gonna like it a lot because so far it's really good. I'm also listening to Talon um, on audiobook and I already hate it. <laughs> But I hate it in that way where I'm going to keep listening to it and so I'll have a lot more to say at the end of this month 
when I do my wrap-up video. And this is a big month for readathons. There's Bout of Books in a couple of weeks and also Crusher TBR at the same time and I'm excited about it because I'm trying to get serious about crushing my own TBR. I'm really excited to read Rebel Bell and Miss Mayhem because everyone's sort of talking about these right now because Miss Mayhem just came out. I also have been really wanting to read Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. This has been on my shelf for quite a while and I've loved all of her books and this one actually looks like it might resonate with me the most and so this one is definitely going to be one that I read this month. I also have Vicious by V.E. Schwab which is a lot of people's like favorite book or so I've heard um, and so I really really want to get to this one. I'm actually going to be buddy reading this one with another booktuber from here in Seattle, so I'll talk about that more later. And of course, I want to start Outlander. Oh, I also, I forgot about this, I wanted to talk about this. It's called The Pinkaboos, Bitterly and the Giant Problem. It was written by Jake and Laura Goslin, illustrated by Billy Kelly. Much like Goldie Blocks, obviously this isn't marketed to me, this is marketed to six to nine year old girls, but I read it anyway because I wanted to see what kind of books that they're putting out for that age range nowadays and I would have definitely loved this book as a kid. So this is a story about three best friends, they're named Bitterly, Abysma, and Belladonna, and they go to this place called Fright School. I think like Monsters Inc, Monsters University, they're monsters that are learning how to be monsters and the idea is actually kind of backwards from Monsters Inc. These monsters are learning how to help young girls scare away their nightmares and, and chase those away and sort of overcome their nightmares, which I think is really cool, but they do it in this really fun way, you know, with these monsters going to this fun school, and while these monsters are supposed to be helping young girls with their problems, they also run into problems themselves at school. There's this big bully named Vex who gave them the nickname the Pinkaboos, which has been hurting their sort of reputation and it's all about them learning to overcome this and I just thought it was so fun and charming and it's pretty funny too. I'm sort of bridging the gap between like a really funny book and a book that actually sort of teaches you about bullies and I think each book in the series kind of tackles a different issue like bullies and all of that. Um, so I think this is great if you know anyone, you know, maybe your own daughter or little cousin or little sister or whatever who loves to read in a sort of in this age range. It's kind of like my first chapter book style. It's um, pretty big font and it has pictures and I probably would have read these books when I was in like kindergarten because I started reading chapter books really early. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was really great and I'm glad to see that there's stuff like this out there for little girls. So yeah, that's it for this month. I tackled a lot of books. I'm really proud of myself. I actually, this bottom shelf is, I'm doing a good job working on it. I gotta get start reading stuff on these two shelves. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about this month and what you are looking forward to reading next month. And if you're going to be EA, I hope I see you there. Thank you guys for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye!